Hello and welcome to the video on inscribed angles. By the end of this video, you should be able to describe what an inscribed angle is, as well as its intercepted arc, and you should be able to compute the measure of an inscribed angle or its intercepted arc given the other. Let's get started. Our first part here is just a definition. What an inscribed angle is. An inscribed angle is an angle that has its vertex on a circle. So an example of an inscribed angle might look something like this. ABC has its vertex on point B and that point is on the circle. That means that the sides of this angle are essentially chords of this circle. Length BA, that's a chord, and line segment BC is also a chord. When we say intercepted arc of an inscribed angle, we're talking about the arc that lies on the interior of an inscribed angle with endpoints that are the sides of the inscribed angle. So essentially, from A all the way over to C, that arc right there is the intercepted arc to angle A, B, C. There are a couple different theorems that we're going to talk about here, but they all go back down to this very first theorem, the inscribed angle theorem. This is without a doubt the most important of the theorems for this particular topic. The inscribed angle theorem says, if an angle is inscribed in a circle, then the measure of the angle is half the measure of its intercepted arc. So if I know the measure of arc AC here, let's say that that arc was 80 degrees, I would immediately know that angle CBA would be 40 degrees. Again, the angle is always half the measure of its intercepted arc if it is an inscribed angle. And again, that's where its vertex is on the circle itself. You could use this, exact, or this theorem the other way around as well. For example, if I happened to give you the measure of angle CBA and told you that this was 37 degrees, you would then know that the measure of arc CA would be double that, or in this case, 74. So to recap that, the measure of angle CBA is half the measure of arc CA, or the measure of arc CA is equal to twice the measure of angle CBA. The next theorem says, if two inscribed angles of a circle or congruent circles intercept the same arc or congruent arcs, then the angles are congruent to each other. The concept is fairly simple if you understand the inscribed angles theorem. What this theorem is saying is, if I know one arc here, let's say arc CD is 86 degrees, then the measure of angle CAD, because it's an inscribed angle that intercepts arc CD, that inscribed angle would be half as much, or 43 degrees. Also, because angle CBD intersects that same arc up there as well, arc CD, then it is also 43 degrees. So again, this theorem is basically saying if you have two separate angles that intercept the same arc, those angles have to be congruent to each other, if they're inscribed angles. The next theorem, an inscribed angle intersects a diameter or a semicircle if and only if the angle is a right angle. Again, the if and only if here means it works both directions. But the reason why this theorem works is because inscribed angles are half the measure of their intercepted arc. So if AC here is the diameter, I immediately know that arc ADC is 180 degrees. Since that arc is 180 degrees, then anything that intercepts that arc that and is an inscribed angle would have to be half of that. So angle A, B, C would have to be a right angle. And our last theorem, theorem 10.9, if a quadrilateral is inscribed in a circle, then its opposite angles are supplementary. Again, like the previous theorems, this all goes back to the inscribed angle theorem. Let me show you why this works. In order to understand this theorem, you have to know what all the arcs of a circle add up to. And you know that already, it's 360 degrees. So if I pick two different angles here, angle GFI and angle GHI, what this theorem is saying is that since they're the opposite angles in that quadrilateral, which is inscribed in a circle, that those two angles are guaranteed to add up to 180 degrees because they're supplementary. And here's why it happens, because no matter how big arc GHI is, arc IFG is the other part of the circle. 
So for example, if arc IFG was 190 degrees, well, then inscribed angle IHG would be half of that, or 95 degrees. Well, since all the arcs of a circle add up to 360, if arc IFG was 190 degrees, then arc IHG would have to be the rest of the circle, or 170 degrees. And since angle, inscribed angle, IFG is half the measure of its intercepted arc, that inscribed angle is half of the 170. So it would have to be 85 degrees. And 95 and 85 do add up to 180. This theorem says that it would work on any set of opposite angles as long as the quadrilateral they're in is inside a circle. So without actually showing it again here, angle FGH and angle FIH those two are going to add up to 180 degrees as well. Well, let's try a few examples. Example number one. In this circle T, the measure of arc QR is 118. The measure of angle PTQ is 78 degrees. We want to find each of the following pieces of information. The first one, part A, the measure of angle RPQ. Well, if we look on the picture and find the measure of angle RPQ, we notice it's that angle right there. If I follow its sides out, I notice that that angle intercepts arc QR. Since arc QR is 118 and the vertex of this angle is on the circle, it's got to be half the measure of its intercepted arc. So the measure of angle RPQ is 59 degrees. Part B, what's the measure of arc PQR? Well, if we look at the picture, this central angle right here is 78 degrees. Central angles will equal to their arcs. So I know that this arc here has to be 78 degrees as well. So the measure of arc PQR, essentially from P all the way through Q, all the way around to R, would be the sum of its two arcs. So 78 plus the 118, or 196 degrees. Part C, find the measure of arc PS. Well, PS, if you remember, when we had two chords that were congruent to each other, notice how these are marked congruent. When two chords were congruent to each other, their arcs were also congruent. So arc QR is 118. That means arc PS here also needs to be 118 degrees. And what's the measure of angle PRS? Well, since the previous problem said that arc PS was 118 degrees, since it is the intercepted arc of in inscribed angle PRS, that angle is going to be half the measure. Half of 118 is 59 degrees. Example number two. In circle H, JK is 3, JL is 5. We want to find the measure of angle K and the length of KL. Well, the measure of angle K in this case has to be 90 degrees. The reason why it has to be 90 degrees is because I notice JL here is a diameter. If it's a diameter, I know that arc JIL is a semicircle. Since that semicircle is 180 degrees, its intercepted arc here had to be 90. And what's the length of KL for part B? Well, for KL, since I know that this angle, angle JKL, is 90 degrees, I can redraw that little triangle there. Since it had a 90 degree angle, and this length was three, and its hypotenuse is five, I can use the Pythagorean theorem to figure out the missing length down here. Pythagorean theorem is a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. In this case, my hypotenuse is five. So to solve that out, nine plus b squared would equal 25. When I subtract nine, I get b squared is 16, and then square root which means B is four. Well, B is really the third side of our triangle here. Length KL, which is four units long. Problem number three. In circle E, the measure of arc AB is 80 degrees. The measure of arc BC is 100. And the measure of arc DC is 60. We want to find the measure of all these other numbered angles. 
Well, before I find any angles, I think it might be helpful here to find the fourth arc in this circle. Arc AD out here, because all the arcs of a circle add up to 360, that last arc has to be 120. I get that by adding up my 60, 180, and subtracting that from 360 degrees. Now that I have that arc, I can get pretty much any angle I want to here. Part A, the measure of angle 1. Well, the measure of angle 1 has an intercepted arc that is BC. Since an inscribed angle is half of its arc, the measure of that angle would be 50 degrees. Part B, to find the measure of angle 2. Well, angle 2, if I follow its sides out, I hit arc AD. Arc AD is 120 degrees, so the measure of angle 2 would be half that or 60. Part C, the measure of angle 3. The measure of angle 3, if I follow its chords out, I hit the 60 degree arc. Inscribed angles are half their arc, so half of 60 is 30. Find the measure of angle 4. The measure of angle 4, if I follow its arcs out, I get arc AB. Half of 80 degrees is 40. The measure of angle 5, that inscribed angle also intercepts arc AB, so it's also half of 80. And the last one, the measure of angle 6, while well, that inscribed angle intercepts arc DC, half of 60 degrees is 30 again. And one last problem, quadrilateral FGHI is inscribed inside this circle, so that the measure of arc FG is 97, the measure of arc GH is 117, the measure of arc GHI is 174. Well, we want to find the measure of angle F. The measure of angle F is half of its intercepted arc. If I start by, because angle F here is a inscribed angle, it intercepts arc GHI, which we just said was 174. Half of 174 degrees would be 87. Since I know the measure of angle F is 87 degrees, I immediately know that the measure of angle H has to be supplementary with that. So 180 minus the 87 is going to give me 93 degrees. Again, that has to happen because opposite angles in any quadrilateral that's inscribed inside a circle have to be supplementary. I can then find the measure of angle I pretty quickly. The measure of angle I, well, that inscribed angle inscribes arc FGH, and FGH is really the 117 plus the 97, or 214 degrees. If that arc is 214 degrees, then half of that would be 107 degrees. And if that's 170 degrees, the measure of angle G has to be 180 minus that, so 180 minus the 107 is going to be 73. This concludes our video on inscribed angle. Have a wonderful day.